Hello and welcome everyone to another episode. Yes, so we're back at the Voyager again. Now, I ended up shooting an episode for this and I think I might have deleted it or I don't know, something happened. It's gone now and uh, yeah. So, I ended up doing the inclination change on it and so we have reached a zero zero inclination. I did speed up time a bit and you know to just to get to the inclination change because I was worried I was gonna eventually pass it and yeah that would kind of just screw up the whole mission and the whole idea of what I had planned in the first place so anyways I've decided I'm gonna just kinda skip this whole 40 days of waiting um, now setting up this burn is going to be s relatively hard and in multiple ways I just well wow, and that's what she said um, there's a lot of little factors here uh, let's see I had a specific time I chose because this one works out almost perfectly um, two hours and it's two hours and 12 minutes Oh god, not, not that one. There we go. It's like so... Wow, 42 days, 3 hours and 12 minutes. Um, why is it moving like that? That, no. That, that is not what I, I had planned. There we go. So, let's see. Well, let me do it now. 2 hours... Or no, 3 hours and 12 minutes. Nope, oh, that's... Oh, wow. This is really hard to set up. Wow. So this should... I, I went through and kind of, you know, made sure that this actually works and all. And see if we can get ourselves on an exit. Exactly what we're looking for. What is this, an encounter? Yeah, there's a Tylo encounter in there. Um... There we go. Perfect. So now this is where I'm going to maybe have to quick save a couple times. And I'm going to do that closer to the burn. We got a four minute burn ahead of us. So yeah, that's that's gonna be a little uh funky. It's um this is a pretty monumental mission mission in my mind. And I you know what? It's kind of giving me that jewel kick again to where I want to start going back to jewel um, you know I haven't been back there in a long long time and Kerbin is up here somewhere I just can't seem to make out where it's at um, sometimes when I like zoom in really closely wait no I guess we were wrong I was wrong about that one that's weird I don't know. I, I remember specifically doing a burn and watching Kerbin disappear in front of me. So I, I don't know what happened there. Um, so then it would be over here behind us. Oh, you know what it was is when we got on the other side to do the burn. So I'm just going to speed up time right now because I don't know why I'm, I'm wasting all this time talking. So yeah, um, it's a pretty monumental mission. Uh, for those of you who don't know about Voyager, um, at least some stuff about it, I would suggest looking it up, doing some reading. There's a few documentaries based on it as well. But um, there's a disc on Voyager. And this is kind of the coolest part in my mind. Is there's a disc on Voyager that basically has a picture of a man and a woman. And it also has, I think, a picture of our star in relation to other stars that are around us and it, it has uh, on this disc it's actually pay playable and I think it even has instructions on how to actually play this disc and on it is basically something called the sounds of earth and on on that the sounds of earth they have um, I think it's about 20 or so different track, 20 to 27 tracks, I believe, of different songs, and also, um, I believe they have, like, 
sounds of whales and a few different things. Whoa, we're getting really close to the deadline here. I don't want to screw this up. Sounds of whales and like I believe like sounds of the ocean and stuff like that. And I also believe that this disc is actually playable and it has pictures on it as well. Like pictures of the earth and um, hello in different uh, what is it? hello in different languages and stuff like that and it's it's got a lot on there and the the heavy part about it all is I I mean I think that that's just awesome if somebody some thing actually ever ends up finding this probe basically you know they'll know that there's another race that exists another spe you know species another extraterrestrial we would be the aliens. And they would know that something else out there exists. But the even more spooky, kind of weird, kind of crazy part is, is say that our solar system, say our sun were to explode tomorrow. Well, actually, no, I take that back. Because if our sun exploded tomorrow, it probably would destroy the probe too. Um, by the time our sun explodes, and say that there's nothing else that affects the satellite, um, well, it shouldn't, it's not even a satellite anymore, it's just a object. It's going out of our solar system. A satellite means it's in orbit around something. So, uh, say, you know, millions of years goes by, say we get wiped away, our planet in or something happens, we all die out and we're completely gone forever. This, pr this one single probe will actually, I mean, it, this is, once again, if we don't have any other real missions like these which i mean i'm eventually i'm sure i really hope we do uh, this one single probe will be there forever i mean for the most part I, like once again it could get swallowed by a black hole or some craziness could happen to it or it just gets smashed by an asteroid or micrometeoroids destroy every just obliterate it but this thing will exist in some way, even if most of the spacecraft itself gets destroyed. The f simple fact that it's a crafted thing, that, you know, there's no real other crafted things. If, if there was a crafted piece that just showed up into our solar system and we found it, we would know that that's no meteorite or anything like that. So just simple fact that they'll know that something out there created this, and they'll know that some somebody else out there exists or existed at some point. But it's to me that's just really heavy. I, I think that's amazing, and I mean I I think it's sad right now be, the way that the space agency is, and it's all politics and about how much money is going to be spent, and. They don't look at it in a perspective that by doing this, you're also going to really push the envelope of technology. And whenever you push the envelope of technology, you always, always open up a new door for just hundreds of new technologies and new things and new ideas need to be thought up and new things need to be developed. Going to the moon was one of our greatest achievements as a, I mean, I, I would say at, is one of our greatest achievements as a species, as, as it's just unbelievable to think that we wouldn't go back and we wouldn't do anything else. We wouldn't have a moon base set up yet or any kind of base in general just kind of set up. And it's just saddening to see something like that. You know, it really is. I, you People talk about the space station and how great it is. It, it, it really isn't in that far of an orbit away from Earth. It really is kind of a joke on how far away from, you know, the ground it is. I, they, they constantly have to um, boost the, elevate, the, the orbit higher because it is... Uh, because of atmospheric drag that's how close to the earth it is and it, to me it's just the space station is a great achievement but it's it's not going to the moon that's you know going to the moon going to mars going to the other planets i mean i always say the moon but i also mean other planets as well i mean it, 
I'm not saying going to Venus would be something, you know, worthwhile going, because we'd probably kill ourselves and even just going. So, you know, going to Mars and... and we just need to be going and doing these things. We should be out in the solar system right now. We shouldn't be shackled to the Earth. And uh, there's a lot of other private companies right now that are also kind of have the mindset on going to the moon or going to Mars. And I just, you know, for one thing, you know, you have like your parents and in their lifetime, they got to watch the the rise and the fall of NASA and the the space race and everything else and my parents especially and just think about how much of an inspiration that was not only to them but to a lot of other people that also got to that were alive and witnessed that at the same time and just think that there's a good possibility that in your lifetime you're not going to see something like that you're not going to experience something like that because of financial constraints which is like the worst decision the financial constraints are literally the worst decision behind anything if if it needs to be if financially it it's worth doing then it, it, it's just a joke to me i I would rather see us going for all mankind, you know, just for everybody. I, I understand that money is tight, and, you know, even for me, I, I don't have tons of money in the bank, and I understand all these things, but in the same sense, saying that we can't go or we're just not going to try anymore because of the fact that it costs too much money is not a valid, that's just not valid for me. I don't. I don't see that's not a valid um, uh, reason I just don't see that as being a valid reason in any way so anyways guys I am going to quick save here and there might be some problems so I'm going to quick save there we go 42 days into this mission actually 61 days 42 days until that burn so this is where it gets a little tricky because now I have to decouple this part and I have to compensate for this decoupler because it will push it away a little bit, the spacecraft. So it will throw off this little burn right here. So I'm going to just kind of mess around a little bit and uh, you know I'll basically see you once we've decoupled this thing because I am going to pull my hair out if I don't get this absolutely perfect. Because if we go, uh, this is the other thing, uh, if we, uh, if I were to decouple right now, it would knock us back into an orbit instead of an exit. So you can see that this thing is like flashing like crazy. Uh, we should be on an exit. That's what we're aiming for right now. There we go. Like that. So right now I'm just gotta, I, I'm, I should quick save again, just, just to be sure. I will see you once we have decoupled this piece. And we're back, guys. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, I had to do this about four times or so. I kind of got it down, and I felt kind of bad not recording it, but uh, it, basically I had to burn backwards about one and a half meters a second. It just, for those of you who are also doing you know, the exact same mission and all that other good stuff, I had to burn back about one and a half meters a second, something like that, and basically it was at like, yeah, yeah, it was 1189.6, and I had to burn it down to like 4.8, and then by doing this decouple, it bumped me up to 5.3, so that was just kind of, wow, that's really close to Jewel, too, um, that was just kind of, uh, you know, I had to make sure that this, in fact, is on an exit trajectory because uh, I don't want to uh, have to do this again. So, this is the part that kind of sucks. Now, some of you might be wondering, that right there, 224 days until we get there. And in that time, I think we are going to be going to Duna. 
Um, my main concern right now, as far as launching anything planetary or interplanetary, and going to uh, Duna or uh, Eve, was basically kind of hanging on this one probe because I didn't want to uh, basically end up missing one of the burn times, and it just wouldn't have worked out so well. So I will be bringing this back. I think uh, in the near future i mean I, I really don't know how many episodes i will have between now and when this thing actually reaches jewel and even if it goes past jewel um you know that i i really don't know but we can uh, this is where we can actually sit back and look at Kerbin here for a second which i think is awesome because i did not know you can actually see him from this far away it, it should be somewhere in the sky over here and hello, that's pretty vague, but where is it? Um, it's about the size of Minmus from uh, Kerbin, roughly. I literally can't even see it right now. I'm I'm usually pretty bad at this. It's just like a speck in the sky too. That's like the. I think this is it right here. To be honest, it might be that. Let's see. I'll speed up time a little bit we'll see something move if uh if not oh there it is wow right there yeah there it is there's Kerbin this is pretty much the last time this thing will ever see Kerbin so anyways guys um you know I, I got a little bit off my chest this episode um you know I'm sure somebody or somebody out there has to agree with me in some way but, um, anyways, guys, thank you for watching. If you like what you see here, subscribe. There's always more to come. To all you new people, welcome. And, uh, yeah, I will see you next time.